Good morning and welcome to this time of celebration and worship together on this 2022 Memorial Day weekend. We want to welcome all of you who are with us virtually. We're all virtual this morning and we hope that wherever you are, that you'll put your name in the chat, that you'll share with us where you are and hopefully maybe out of the ordinary spending time with family and friends, but most of all, um, taking some time this weekend to recognize and remember those who have transitioned to home eternal and those who have given their life in service for our country. I want to make sure that if you have not already gotten a summer calendar, that these are available um, at the chapel and we'd love to have you as we focus this summer at Walker Chapel on food and fun and friends. There will be lots and lots of ways for you to engage and get involved as we um, engage our neighborhood moving out into the community and we hope that you will be a part of as many of those things as you possibly can. So I also want to make sure that you have next Sunday, June 5th, on your calendar, we'll be in the chapel at the regular time, 10.30 a.m., as we celebrate the gift of Pentecost together. But we'll also be having a special emphasis on being a fully inclusive United Methodist Church as we celebrate our relationship with Reconciling Ministries Network, as we talk about how important it is for us to be fully inclusive of all people. And so we look forward to that time together. We'll also bring back the Walker Chapel Social Hour. So look forward to that immediately following worship when we can be together. We'll watch the weather if it's possible to have that time outside. We will um, just to be a little safer, but the Fellowship Hall also should be fine for us to be together as well. One more date that I really hope that you'll put on your calendar and that's June 11th. It's a Saturday. We are participating along with several other United Methodist congregations in the Washington DC area, in the Virginia area, and also in the Maryland area as we gather for the Washington DC Pride Parade. We have our own Walker Chapel sign, so we definitely wanna have a following. We want to celebrate what it means to be um, a group of people, a people who are fully inclusive of LGBTQIA persons, that we are all one as the family of God together. So we'll be walking in the parade together, plan to um, dress in comfy clothes and shoes that are easy to walk in. If you're not sure if you can make that walk, there are some spots on the parade float and if you'll let Derek in the church office know then he'll do everything he can to make sure you have a spot. This is a wonderful way for us to uh, make the Spirit of God plain for people um, who are watching and listening to see if indeed we are people who love the people we say we love, which is all God's people. Those are the notes that I have for us this morning. It is indeed my joy to invite you to relax and be refreshed in the spirit of God's energy. And may this Memorial Day weekend be all that you hope it will be. Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship. Blessings on you all this day from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day of Christ's ascension. He is seated on the right hand of God. Honor, power, glory, and majesty are his. Let us praise him with shouts of joy. We are called to be witnesses to this great wonder. We are called to proclaim God's good news of love for all God's people. Amen. Join me for the morning prayer. Let us pray. Astounding God, we come before you this day as witnesses to Christ's ascension from this realm to the heavenly kingdom. We stand in awe and wonder at what we hear and see. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the power and truth of your words. 
Give us courage and joy that we might be witnesses to your eternal love through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I
Good morning, everybody. Here we are um, at the Walker Chapel Cemetery, and we're adapting a little bit because um, we need to, and sometimes um, that's just the right thing to do. So I'm holding the camera, and you all are looking a little sweaty. Looks like you've got some bruises on your knees because you have been working hard this morning so this is your time tell us what you've been doing and speak up so that everybody can hear what have you been doing this morning we've been speak loud ellie speak we've loud. been cleaning up the cemetery and pulling out weeds yep and we've we'll, been putting mulch in there too yep pulling up weeds in the cemetery putting down mulch making sure it's just nicer Making sure it's nicer. Um, had we had some nice treats, right? What kind of treats do we have? We had, we had donuts. Donuts. Very good. Congratulations to whoever. Very them. good, and thank you to whoever brought the donuts. That would be Miss Deanne. And we've had some great water that um, was provided for us. So here we are because um, the cemetery is a really special place at Walker Chapel. And one of the ways that we um, do life together is take care of the cemetery. And it's a really um, great day today to be doing this because we're also thinking about Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is tomorrow. And um, even though we're fil filming this a little early, um, we are remembering those who have given their lives for um, our country and for us. And so lots of those folks are buried as well as many, many other very, very special folks that um, are important to us are buried right here in the cemetery. And so we're thinking about and giving thanks for, for those men and women who have given their lives for us. And so one of the ways that we give back is to tend the places where they have their eternal rest. Um, guys, I just, this just popped into my mind. Um, we live in a really special place, right? How many of you have ever been to Arlington National Cemetery? Hmm. Not me. You no, haven't no, been there not yet? Me. Not, not, well, you know me. what? Not let's me. plan, let's plan this summer to take a trip to Arlington okay. because that is a very, very special place that um, reminds us of how many folks have given their lives for us. And um, so we'll do that this summer. I bet Miss Al I bet Allison will go with us too. And um, she was here earlier working also. All right, do you have anything else you wanna share um, before we go? Anybody? We made breakfast for us, yeah. You made breakfast for yourselves? Mm -hmm. What did you make? Cereal. Cereal. What cereal. and how many ingredients are in cereal? Um milk and cereal. <laughs> milk and cereal. Well, you know you gotta start somewhere, Jacob, right? Okay, so anybody else wanna share anything? We heard from Jubilee actually. She FaceTimed in this morning early and she was preparing to spend some time in the sprinkler um, today. So that sounds good. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Um, we were thinking about going to the pool after this to just cool off after a hard day work. Oh, going to the pool after this or hard day work. Or play in the sprinkler. Or play in the sprinkler. In fact, we think we may have one on site now, and we're about to turn it on. So let's, um, before we leave each other, let's have a prayer together. And here we go. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you, Thank you for the opportunity, for the opportunity to, remember to remember those who have gone before us. Those who have gone before us. Amen. Amen. Bye. -bye. So Jay, a lot of people know you, but how did you grow up? How did I grow up? Well, <clears throat> um, I was born in Chillicothe, Ohio, it's a pretty small town. And uh, when I was right at 10 years old, we moved out 
to our farm, Crosswinds Farm, near Circle Bell. So I spent a lot of time raising cattle, um, taking care of their needs, helping calves be born in the springtime, which was always kind of a, a magical time. Uh, I went to a pretty small high school, Logan Elm High School, and um, was, uh, was able to go to Ohio State for at least a little while after that, before I moved to DC. So when you think about your faith and your upbringing, how did the way you grew up, your upbringing, affect, how does it affect your faith? So my family was always very um, involved in the Methodist Church. My parents were both baptized at Walnut Street Methodist in Chillicothe. They were married there. Um, my grandparents were, were members. My grandmother in particular was very, uh, very faithful to, to church. And when we moved out to the farm, we transferred to Community United in, in Pickaway County. And through all that time, I was involved in a lot of different activities. So I was in a, in a play. Uh, I, was, I still say they typecast me. I was this light angel, <laughs> the one that was always getting in trouble and uh, swimming when you weren't supposed to in the river of life and you know, things like that. Um, but I always had a lot of friends around and there was a big focus when I was a kid on, on values, on um, the difference between right and wrong. And I'm not saying we got that right every time, meaning I think maybe we we recognize that uh, perhaps we were ascribing some, ascribing some values to things that maybe were, were, were wrong-headed as we look back on them. Uh, but, but certainly in that time, uh, it was church was a chance to kind of refresh and renew the sense of uh, doing the right thing and also helping others. And we did all that uh, at both the churches I attended. I went through uh, communion um, and uh, confirmation, rather. Confirmation at, um, in Circleville. And about that time, I thought, well, gee, maybe I, maybe I went, might want to be a minister. Because I thought it was really a neat concept of bringing good to the world. Later on, I decided that probably wasn't for me but it really did kind of center me on, on uh, trying to do good for, for others. Mm. So I've been thinking about um, some of the, you know, the reality that you have lived in this area, uh, raising your family and um, the capital of the United States for the last 20, maybe even 30 years? 40. Uh, 40 years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and really, uh, since living here, since my 2019, um, have just been really amazed at what a unique place it is to live in the United States. And so um, I'm curious to know, when you think about what your experience is to live here near Washington, D.C. Um, what and how can, or might your faith be, um, what's unique about living here in, in your relationship to your faith or living out your faith? Um, talk to us a little bit about that. So I think part of my faith is really grounded in wanting to help lift others and to help make the world a better place. I don't think God picks favorites when it comes to his people, meaning meaning people around the world, tribes around the world, if you will. Um, but I do think there was a special significance for the founding of this country. The concept of religious liberty the ability to express your faith without worrying about retribution from the government. 
um, being able to live that faith. And, and so getting to work in an area that is, is, is the center of all of that, of all of those constitutional values. Um, I mean, it's why I moved here. I, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of not only the freedom of speech and expression and religion, but also advancing values that I thought would be empowering to large numbers of people in, in the United States and also being able to help export those values, especially those first freedoms, to other areas of the world that, that may be living in, in the shadows and darkness. There's so many people of faith around the world that can't express it and they can't, they can't live their faith. Um, and I think we have a special role here in the United States to help, to help others, um, to enable others uh, to have those same freedoms. So we're at Memorial Day weekend and a particular season where we recognize and remember. Um, what are your thoughts? Can you reflect on the significance of Memorial Day? What do you think about? And especially as you think about the intersection of our country, Memorial Day, and our faith. Well, the first thing I think about is my grandfather, because tomorrow would be his 111th birthday. <clears throat> um, obviously, he made a very big impact on my life. 50 years later, I'm thinking about him. He died when I was 10 years old. Um, he was somebody who was really self-made, very hardworking, um, also served in the military himself. He served in the cavalry, actually. And uh, he obviously didn't die in battle, and that's what Memorial Day is all about. But I do think that many of us think about, in addition to those fallen heroes, which obviously are absolutely the, the primary reason for Memorial Day and the reason that, um, that we reflect during Memorial Day, they died for protecting those first freedoms that we all enjoy. But I think so many of us think about others who have passed as well. My dad, who also served in the military, the Air Force, passed away a year and a half ago. My grandmother, who died 22 years ago. Numerous aunts and uncles and even cousins. Um, we all, I think, take time on Memorial Day to kind of reflect on how they, how they impacted our lives and how, in their own ways, they helped advance those first freedoms and helped to advance the democracy that, that we're privileged to enjoy. Um, it's, I think it's days like Memorial Day that give us the opportunity to, um, to really reflect on those things that are important to us. Faith helps drive that, clearly. Um, the love that they've handed down, as you so often say, I think, I think has special meanings on days like Memorial Day. Thank you for this time and space to reflect, and to think about, um, and remember. Thanks. Well, thank you, too. Um, you're always challenging us to think differently about our faith, um, how we can live our faith more effectively, um, how we can help others, and how we can make the world a better place. So um, I think we thank you as well. It's been uh, it's been a great privilege to, to have you offering your pastoral wisdom to all of us in the congregation. Well, thanks. And we'll look forward to tomorrow, Memorial Day 2022. Right. Dear Walker Chapel community, while the little town of Uvalde, Texas is geographically very distant from our own church, what happened there this past week is very close to our hearts. How could we call ourselves Christians if we were not feeling the weight 
of knowing that 19 children and two teachers face moments of absolute terror before drawing their last breaths in classrooms 111 and 112. Whether by coincidence or through the Spirit, the Bible reading from Friday's Upper Room devotional was from the book of Job. My study Bible quotes John Wesley in his, in his notes as saying that there are in Job many things hard to be understood. The study notes also point out that the word signifying patience, as in the patience of Job, came from a King James translation, and that the modern translation of the same word is endurance. This is the place we are now. We must not waver in striving towards fully living our faith in our daily lives as we endure what hurts, as we endure what we cannot understand, as we endure what we cannot accept. Evil's opportunistic. It's opportunistic in how it appears. From what was experienced in the exile of Israel five centuries before the birth of Christ, to the concerning splintering of present-day American culture. Sadly and ironically, as our society loses its religious mooring, it loses its ability to attain or maintain peace of mind when faced with having to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Pray from your hearts for those who have just taken that walk. Good morning, Walker Chapel. I am coming to you this morning from the Vietnam Memorial as the sun has just risen in the background. Um, I wanted to take a few seconds to remember Memorial Day today and those who have served for our country. But I was wondering and grappling with this issue of how do we actively remember those who fought for us. And I was talking with one of my friends who's going into chaplaincy and has a good military background. She said that something some soldiers do actively as we approach holidays like Memorial Day and Veterans Day is they place a coin on a soldier's grave. And the coins each represent something. A penny means that they visited. A nickel means that they served in boot camp together. A dime means that they were maybe in the same platoon together. And a quarter means they were there when that soldier had fallen. And so each coin, as it gets bigger, represents a bigger impact that they had on that soldier's life. And it's a way that they can actively remember their fellow soldiers. And so as you go to Arlington and other places of memorial, maybe you can look for those coins. But I was challenged to think, how do I remember those people in my life who have impacted me? Some maybe have had a penny's worth of impact and I say thank you, and others I share a meal with. So as we think about what it means to remember, would you pray for me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the ways that you have touched our lives and placed people who touched our lives. Thank you for the ways that you provide for food, for friends, for family. We thank you for the ways that you are with us when we get fatigued about all that is happening in the world. Our hearts are heavy as we think about the ways that COVID has impacted the supply chain, the politics. When we see the violence in the world, we come before you with heavy hearts, but yet we are grateful. who have served our country and those who have impacted us. Would you give us the strength to actively remember and to be grateful this day and all days?